Hello, gentlemen and lady. So I have had my 4090 in my upgraded system for a couple months now, and I've been thoroughly enjoying it. And a lot of the times the question is asked in the CG community, oh, how important is it to have the best hardware? And I'll provide my thoughts on that later, but I want to show you what it is like to work in a system with the highest end hardware. I'll be going through a few scenes that I've done, and just some simple sort of benchmarks. We'll be looking at the Blender benchmark scores. And yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is Klaus. Klaus is something I'm sort of known for, at least more recently. After I've done updated Cloud tutorials, I've been just a general psycho about it. So I have a simple scene. It's just a cloud with an HDRI. You can find the cloud shader here, not the specific one, but the process behind it in one of my recent YouTube videos. So let's load it in. Oof, pretty fast. You might be expecting a little bit more, but I want to sort of show you what we're looking at here. So we're looking at full path trace glory everything is very nice and this isn't a small vdb this is one and a half gigabytes this is a lot of volumes to not only load but render you can see everything works it's performant and these are relatively like conservative step sizes you can turn these up and it'll still look fine and i'll render pretty much real time almost without much loss of detail But you're not going to be handling heavy volumetrics in every scene. Sometimes you just need to load a lot of data. I want to show you how that works. So, this is less of a graphics card thing, more of a RAM and CPU thing. But I have these 32K HDRIs. This is the 4K version I'm using right now. Here's the 32K. Let's open this up and let's see how it looks. So I'm going to give it a minute to process. You can see I can load in. Now the render performance isn't anything to write home about here. It's just an HDRI, so it's obviously going to be real time. But 10 gigabytes or so of VRAM, and I'm running a lot of other stuff. Well, actually not that much other stuff, but there's some cache in there as well. My computer can handle these HDRIs and change. I can turn back on my VDB. You see, we aren't even at half capacity for VRAM, which is amazing. And that is the biggest thing here. The performance is excellent, but the VRAM allows you to load more stuff into your scene. So, here is a different challenge. Volumetrics are one thing. And they're incredibly taxing, but they're definitely not the only thing. So let's see how this GPU handles large amounts of scatterers. So you can see I have about 300,000 objects, each with um, 100,000-ish plus uh, polygons. And we are going to load everything in. So it's going to take a little bit to load everything. And boom, like butter. Uh, every once in a while, the frame will freeze and stuff. But, you know, it is pretty much real time. And there are times when it's like, if you have slightly less complex scatterers, it's literally real time. There's really nothing that slows it down. So you can literally work in rendered view update your scatterers by like you change the scale up you know All right and it's fine just lovely stuff like this and it's just such an easy thing to do just working with hardware that's suited for really complex stuff 
I'm saying nothing new here. I'm kind of just rambling on and just sort of letting the visuals speak for themselves. They can't really blame me because it's one thing to see it happen and it's another thing to just experience it for yourself. And this is why I personally, and I'll delve into this a little bit more later, if you're a high-end, like, really good 3D artist, this is a good investment. It's about $1,500, at least here where I live, that is US dollars, and it'll save you hours and hours and hours, so it'll pay for itself. So now let's look at the Blender benchmark. You can just search it up here. Click on here. You can see CPU, GPU. By the way, the C these CPU rigs, if you aren't familiar with like the Epic 9654 and all that fun stuff, like this is, these things are, are wild. <laughs> um, but we're interested in GPUs. These are like $20,000 plus setups, so don't pay attention here. So, 4090 is on top and like you might be like duh that's that that's to be expected it's their flagship card but that's only really going to be your reaction if you don't know what stuff like the 6000s are and like the other like ai and other really like intensive data crunching gpus this is an eight thousand or so dollar card, probably even more. Eight to ten, eight to ten thousand. This is like a fourth of that price, and it runs faster. Now I wouldn't say it's a better card because this has twice the VRAM. This has twenty four gigabytes. This has forty eight, and there's a bunch of other stuff that I. It's a little bit technical for me, so I don't want to really spew tech nonsense that I don't understand but um the 6000s and all those professional cards they have a bunch more capabilities beyond what the consumer ones can handle so like by saying like oh every studio should be running on 4090s like no <laughs> absolutely not that's a kind of ignorant take but if you're a personal like if you're uh, like a freelancer or contractor or whatever. Like, I'm not going to go out and buy an ADA. I'm going to stick to this. Because it gets me the performance and I can always optimize scenes. <coughs> I haven't really maxed out the VRAM. Unless I was trying to. With like absurdly high texture details or whatever. So... Do I think it's worth it? Strong maybe. If you have the money, if you're doing this as a business, even if it's not your main one, I think it's definitely a good investment because you'll see returns very quickly because you're not going to be spending all your time rendering or having to use render farms or whatever. A couple other YouTubers in the space and like just general commentators on VFX have provided their opinions and you probably have a few of your own i just wanted to provide my experience so with that i'm gonna shill the discord real quick shill the patreon and then we'll be done so start with the discord so we've got about 2500 people active on here it's an amazing place and yeah we host events we have very lively discussions ton of very lovely very talented people he are here and we have people from all varieties like all different backgrounds all different skill levels you will be welcome here if you are day one into cg day one into art by the way we have some 2d artists that aren't like cg necessarily but yeah or if you're we got a couple of industry veterans you know some soups some leads some seniors some mids some juniors really fun place we're pretty lax we allow a lot of stuff just join if you want a cool community to hang out with uh and 
That's not even mentioning we got a ton of free assets. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're here to join from the uh just for the assets, we will welcome you. Just stick around, maybe say hi. Server assets here. Got a bunch of fun stuff. Uh HDRIs. This was publicized on YouTube though. Um some of this stuff isn't unique to the server, but there is there are HDRIs and stuff. We're compiling all of them. I usually just stick stuff in a random channel when I want to share something. So uh sometimes it makes its way over here, sometimes it doesn't. But every once in a while there is a drop for the kind people of the server. Uh anyways. I am going to leave it at that. Uh join the Patreon. Patreon has a bunch of cool stuff. HDRIs, models, all that fun stuff. Uh, you can find more about it. It'll, there'll be a link in the description. I will see you guys later. It was a pleasure. Have a good one. Bye-bye.